Today is Saturday, 17th of August 2024. We are all joining for another pro sessions of uh, Mindfulness for Beginners conducted by Nisranamane Farasmana Sri from Sri Lanka. Joining us today from Nisranamane is Venerable, with your permission, Bhante, uh, Damakusala Thero. As for the agenda today, we will have the guided mindfulness practice session to start with. And then we have the Dhamma talk, which will help us to practice our mindfulness on a particular topic. Today's topic will be planning, which will be followed by a presentation of the reports that we have received today, including if with Q&A session. To start with the session, I would like to invite Venerable Thero to conduct the guided mindfulness session today. Over to you, Bhante. Much merits. Okay, thanks, Nadeep. Hello, everyone. Today, let's take some time to do a mindful walking session. I think last week we did uh, mindful sitting. So today it's good to, you know, take some time to practice mindful walking. For this, if you can turn on the video and join more actively, it would be much helpful. You can find some space, probably like 10, 15 steps, that type of a space where you can walk comfortably and make sure that there are no obstacles and start walking. Walk in a comfortable manner that is natural to your body. And keep keep the eyes directed towards the floor in front of you. Maybe like six, seven feet ahead of you. You can keep the eyes directed towards that area. And walk in a comfortable manner. And the difference is that we try to be mindful that we are walking. Usually when we walk, we walk just for the sake of walking. Our attention is distracted. But when we do mindful walking, we walk and we try to be present with the walking. Then when you try this, initially you might not feel it. But with time, when you do few rounds, you start to feel the walking sensations, the bodily sensations. Uh, most prominent may be touch of your feet, the pressure, the sensations, the texture of the feet you might feel. So we try to maintain our attention with, with the walking, with those bodily sensations and continue. Try to take few mindful steps and naturally you get distracted with the surrounding sights thoughts, certain sounds might start storytelling. So this way you get distracted. But time after time you can realize, you can be conscious that you are distracted and return back to the walking. Feel the walking body again. Feel the walking sensations again. Try to maintain that attention. Again and again we get distracted. But we become aware of that distraction action and gently return back to the walking sensations. So this way we'll try to take some time to do a mindful walking session. I invite all of you to join uh, a walking session.
Okay, everyone, that's our time for mindful walking today. Now you can return back to your seats. Thank you very much, Master Merit Bhante. Uh, and hope, hopefully everyone enjoyed the mindfulness session with the great mindful walking. Next up on agenda is our talk on mindfulness. The topic is today uh, planning. I planned today's session and I had a few notes, but I couldn't find those notes. And then it did, the plan didn't go as planned. <laughs> so let's see what uh, Bhante has to tell us. And over to you, Bhante. Thank you very much. <laughs> so no no amount of planning get, can get you prepared. That's the thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for that uh, wonderful introduction <laughs> to the talk. With that, we will uh, go forward and talk a little bit about the topic that we have in hand. Now, usually in life, in order for us to thrive, we need a purpose. We need meaning. The purpose and the meaning is important in life. Whenever we, you have meaning, you can strive towards that. Whenever you have purpose, you can strive towards that. That's how we usually survive. We want to achieve this purpose. We want to find the meaning. That way, we usually continue. And the issue with these things is that most of the time, although we plan a lot, we have this purpose, we try to achieve it, but along the way, some due to some reasons, maybe due to surrounding people or circumstances, we usually get frustrated. You don't try to, you don't get to achieve your purpose, the meaning that you are planning for. So what we do is initially we go through like psychological death kind of a thing. The purpose or the meaning was uh, destroyed. So you have a certain phase that, that may be like a phase of grief that you go through. Now in this new age, they say like five stages of death. Whenever something goes wrong, people go through these five stages of death. I can't remember exactly, but I think it goes like uh, the very first one is denial. You deny that this, this happened. Then you get angry. You get angry at the person or the incident. Right? Then you try to bargain try to come into terms with this. Maybe the fourth step would be grief. And finally, final stage, fifth one, is the acceptance. Right? So that way, usually when our goals destroyed, when certain purpose is destroyed, we go through this type of a psychological death. Even the conceptual death it has this idea behind it. When we die, along with that, our entire world dies. The friends and family, they too die. Whatever we achieved, material gains, they too die. So that's what the death is most scared. The death is most feared. Because your entire world dies with it. You don't get to talk to your friends and family again. You don't get to, you know, enjoy the material things that you have gathered. So when you die, your entire world dies. Even when a smaller purpose or a meaning dies, we go through a certain part of death. And we cry we feel frustrated, we feel hurt. But somehow, sooner or later, you start to find a new purpose. 
you find a new meaning and again you start to you know work towards that purpose or meaning try to put so many hours and try to achieve it so this way we continue if you reflect upon your own life you might recall certain periods you had certain certain purposes meanings trying to achieve them maybe decades you spent but at the end of the day you had to find a new purpose or a meaning right when we were younger we wanted certain things but soon they were reduced in value or destroyed then we found new things that we wanted so this is a never ending process but it gives us energy it gives us power to continue it gives us momentum right whatever the meaning purpose that you have i think i re- recalled this book last time also the it's a book called man's search for meaning it is nothing related to our practice but it has some information regarding those uh world war 2 prisoners they were in concentration camps and for months for years they had to withstand those troubles and somehow survive they didn't get enough medicine or food they didn't have enough facilities for them to live but somehow they had to continue with little food and medicine that they had and throughout the day time they had to do heavy duty work labor so these people they don't get enough nourishment to their bodies they don't get enough sleep they don't get enough uh, rest but somehow survive somehow survive because they has they has this meaning or the purpose they want to reunite with their families that's the purpose they want to go back to their homes that's the purpose they want to return to their friends and family so as long as they have those type of purposes these people survive whatever the difficulties they survive whatever the lack of nourishment they survive whatever the hard labor they survive as long as they have a meaning or a purpose beyond this concentration camp but along the way somebody hears that their family members are also dead right if such a bad news comes then suddenly this man's purpose or the meaning is destroyed no longer there is a family for him to re- reunite right so as soon as that person hears that news or the message he loses his meaning and purpose in life then the reality of the concentration camps hit him so hard he realized suddenly that i am in a concentration camp i have no food i have no medicine i have no freedom and it hits him so hard and soon within few days few weeks the man is dead why the greater purpose or the meaning was lost the reality of the concentration camp became stronger and that very change uh, didn't give him a will to survive right so you can see even in a concentration camp as long as the people they have a greater meaning or a purpose in life a meaning a purpose that that takes them beyond this camp they will survive as soon as they lose that purpose meaning they die right so that type of uh, experience that writer is sharing right so you can see how important this purposes in our life how important the meaning in our life as long as we have that we can strive we can survive whatever the difficulties we can survive whatever the uh, troubles that we go through right so you can see people when they have a purpose maybe you know 
raising their children, maybe gaining money, maybe gaining, you know, fame, whatever it is. As long as they have that purpose, meaning they survive. They can put on so many hours per day. They work tirelessly, right? So as long as they have this purpose or meaning. So in our practice, what shall we do? Can we destroy these purposes, meanings in life? Can we survive after destroying these purposes, meaning in life? That's a problem. Usually when we have purpose, when we have meaning, that is the main driving force. That gives us energy. But in the process, you feel hurt, you get frustrated, you get depressed time after time. Because time to time, these purposes, they become meaningless. These, uh, <coughs> these targets, goals, plans, they, they, they get destroyed. Right? So that happens. So is that the only option? Going after some meaning, going after some purpose. And when that purpose is destroyed, go through the pain, somehow again rise from the ashes and continue with a new purpose, continue with a new meaning. So is that the only option that we have? That's the, that's the idea that we are going to discuss. Right? Because this is the main energy source that, that, that survives, that gives us power to survive, that drives us towards a certain goal or something, right? So in the sense of practice, what can we do? Now, when if we don't have any purpose or a meaning, can we survive? Yeah, that's the question that we have to ask. Now, let's think about our usual walking and sitting practice, what are we doing? What is the what is the idea about walking and sitting practice? Usually when we go into walking, we walk in a comfortable manner. Our day-to-day -day walks, when we are not mindful, we have a goal, we have a target. We want to reach that person. We want to reach that destination. That way we walk. But in mindful walking, we have no destination. And instead, we try to appreciate the journey. What is the journey? The, the present moment. The sensations at your feet. The, 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 the surrounding sound sights. Among all these things, we try to walk. We try to keep our attention with these things and walk. So in a way, in our mindful walking, we try to appreciate the journey instead of the destination. That's the very idea of meditation. Even in sitting, usually you sit for some purpose. You want to watch TV, you want to wait for somebody. You are traveling in a car. That way you sit. right? But in mindful sitting, we have no such purpose or meaning. We simply sit and try to enjoy the present moment. Whatever that feels in the present moment, maybe the breath, maybe the surrounding sounds, thoughts, we simply sit with them. Right? So even in walking and sitting practice, the idea of meditation is that instead of the destination, try to appreciate the journey. That is the very idea. Right, So, in a way, when we meditate, we try to survive at least for a little while without a purpose or a meaning. That's the very idea. Now, let's say a beginner, when they start this practice, it is really hard for them. Why? Basically, this is the reason. Because your whole life Maybe your entire life you have gone after a meaning or a goal, right? But for the first time, for the very first time, maybe in life, 
you you try to appreciate the journey instead of the destination right that becomes really difficult for some people their minds go crazy as soon as they come to a retreat or at least few hours of meditation they realize their minds go crazy why right? for the very first time you try to live survive without a purpose or a meaning it's not easy but gradually with time you become more and more comfortable with it just for few minutes i can survive without a purpose or a meaning now few days ago we did this mini retreat for some new people and one of the ladies she was sharing her experience and said that i could feel that my mind is all over the place i haven't felt this before when i wasn't meditating my mind was much calm but now as soon as i try to be mindful as soon as i start meditation i can feel my mind is all over the place so most people they read it as some trouble they got from meditation that's what they think they think that this happened because of the meditation i was fine earlier i try to meditate and my mind is all over the place my mind goes crazy that's how they read it but in reality as long as you don't try to tame your mind it is uh, in its natural habitat the mind is like a wild beast and it is naturally roaming around in its habitat but as soon as when you start meditation when you try to be mindful this beast maybe for the very first time realizes that it is no longer free the meditator they are trying to tame this beast as soon as the mind realizes it it goes crazy it goes wild right so that's what happens to beginners they think that this is because i meditated this this is a side effect of meditation that i am feeling but in reality because you are meditating because you are trying to tame this beast you realize that this is this is how its nature this is a wild animal wild beast as long as it is not tamed it is fine but when you start taming it you can really feel the difficulty right so but this is a phase it won't last forever the meditators soon they become comfortable to live for probably like few minutes 30 minutes one hour without a purpose even in the beginning of the practice the purpose is meditation the meaning is meditation try to catch as many mindful breaths as possible try to catch as many mindful steps as possible that too is some kind of a purpose meaning of course but with time you realize in 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 in, in meditation you simply just be just be with the process just go with the flow that is the very idea of meditation we say the the flow state when you say flow state you are in your walking but you feel everything you know the sights are there sounds are there bodily sensations are there or the thoughts memories are there among all these things you walk you are mindful even in the sitting you can feel this flow state all the things are there but among them you are simply witnessing you are you are simply being with it right so that type of a meditation is the real meditation but initially you try a little and gradually you become much more comfortable with having no purpose meaning at least for like 30 40 minutes right now i found this very nice zen story it's the master is tilopa he says to one of his disciples he says go go off to an isolated retreat and avoid any meditation that's his advice 
go off to an isolated retreat and avoid any meditation. Now, this is a paradox, you know. When you go off to an isolated retreat, the very idea or the purpose is meditation. Right? But he's giving another advice. He's saying avoid any meditation. If you have a certain goal as meditation, then that too is not the practice. Right? Most people, they have a goal in meditation. So we are caught in the same process. Having a purpose, meaning. That, that's, that's how we survive. But later in the practice and you mature, you realize there's no real goal in meditation. That's why we prefer the word mindfulness instead of meditation. That's why we prefer mindful walking instead of walking meditation. That's why we prefer mindful sitting instead of, you know, sitting meditation. Because most of the time, this meditation word, it's a haunted word. You know, most people, they think that meditation, you have to do something. They talk about, you know, concentration meditation, meditation. Then various chanting meditations, various things are there. Thousand and one methods are there. Whatever the people see in their dreams, they, they, they put it as a new meditation method. But in reality, if you know the real meditation or the mindfulness practice, you simply have to be witness. That's all. You don't do anything. It's more about non doing than doing. So that's why Tilopa is saying, go to, go off to an isolated retreat, but avoid any meditation. Right? So that's, that's some deep idea about the practice, about the way of the practice. Right? So these things you have to experience little by little when you mature in your practice, you get to understand this more and more. Not purely from the book knowledge, but you have to practice a lot. Practice will tell you how many hours you, you put on towards your practice. Can you at least do two hours daily? Can you, can you maintain that pace for a few months? That way you have to approach this. Now, a few days ago, a young man, he came here probably like for three days very first time uh, to our monastery. So I just talked with him, trying to give him some advice about uh, the walking and sitting practice. And yeah, whatever I say, he knows it already. Right? He's already aware of it. And he's adding something as well. Right? So I asked him, then he says that I, I, I have covered many of the books from the monastery. And I have listened to many Dhamma talks uh, from Chief Bhante. That's why I came here. So I said, good. But now you have all this knowledge. But you haven't applied that knowledge in a practical manner. Right now, very knowledge about the practice is becoming a hindrance for the guy. Without even doing, he knows everything. Right, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. So in practice, we give some information, of course, that that knowledge is necessary, but we have to prioritize the practice. Now, even our program, if you go through the basic instructions, very simple guidance is there. Some people they are not happy when they read it. They want a bigger guidance. You know, one hour talk. Can you give on the practice? Then I can start. But in reality, when, when we think about the proper practice, you have to give little information and get the person to practice. After practicing, we can discuss. That discussion is important. They have to provide their meditation experience. And based on that, we can discuss. We can guide them uh, further, probably like few steps ahead. We can guide them. But the most important thing is you have to first get some idea and do it. Try it. If you, have, if you haven't tried before, you can try after this program. Walk for like 30 minutes and see what you feel. 
sit for some time and see what you feel. Simply be mindful in the process and experience it. So that way, when you practice, you'll have your own experience. With that experience, we can discuss again. Okay, now good. Now you can do like this. Now you can, you know, maintain your attention like this. So that we are doing every week. Again, with that additional information, you go and practice. Practice for a few more hours. Then come back with your experience. Again, discuss. Again, get some information, guidance. And again, practice for a few more hours. That approach is proper. Most people, they have so much knowledge about meditation, but they don't know how to apply it practically. That type of a knowledge is useless. That's what happened to this new age, you know, new world. So much knowledge. You say various names, AI or whatever, they are providing so much knowledge. You go and type any question, they'll answer for you. Nowadays, even the assignments kids are doing through the AI. Right? The teachers are in trouble. Okay, so that way, a lot of information, knowledge is there. But nobody knows how to utilize it properly. So the wisdom is lacking in this new age. Wisdom is how to use, utilize all these information that you have. You talk to top class CEOs, what they are doing is not the knowledge part. Instead, they, 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 they try to utilize everybody's knowledge in an effective manner. That is the role of a manager if you are, if you are successful. Right? Otherwise, you try to fill in the gaps of all the knowledges. That's not possible. You have experts in different, different areas. Can you, can, how can you get them working together? How can you get them to apply their knowledge in a useful manner? That is the very idea of wisdom. So in this world, we have a lot of information, but very little wisdom. How to, how to utilize this knowledge, right? So in meditation also, this happens. That's why we say, just start your practice, experience it. Then we can talk. Then we can, you know, give more insights into the practice. So that way you have to continue. That way you have to continue. And when you continue like that, with time, maybe like with few weeks of practice, you realize that you are able to uh, live at least short periods without a purpose or a goal. Without so much plans in your mind. And when you feel this space, when you feel this like blank kind of space, you feel like you are in heaven. Most people, they, they say that this is like heavenly experience. I felt like I was in cloud nine, right? That type of experience they feel because even for a short moment, the purpose... They, they they could experience their mind without any goal or a target or a purpose. Right? Just just comfortable in the present moment. Maybe for a few minutes, just for a few minutes, but still it is a life-changing kind of experience. For the very first time in your whole life, you are experiencing the peace without purpose, without meaning. But you can't sustain it. That's the issue. Right? Next moment it is destroyed. Again, the usual plans, memories or everything arises. Everything arises. Again, you go back to your chaotic life. You, you try to achieve things. Try to, you know, find meaning, purpose. That way you continue. But again... <clears throat> Nadeep... We temporarily lost you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can you hear, hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's fine now. Okay. Right, so few, few, for a few minutes, you feel it. But again, after a while, the mind goes into the usual habitual behavior. Right? But this way, 
uh, time after time, every day, few minutes, you practice, you become more and more comfortable. This, uh, this state of living or living without a meaning or a purpose. Gradually, you have to approach it. If you try to do it suddenly, you might really go crazy. Right? That happens to some people when they, they think that this practice or um, like monkhood, it's more like a romantic picture that they see. Right? They say that I give up everything. I go to a forest. I, I take a ball and, you know, wear a robe and I go on Pindapata. Right? Then they have this romantic picture in their mind. You know, going on Pindapata in robes and somebody is offering them uh, dana. Right? That type of a romantic picture they have in mind. But you try to do it in reality and see what happens. You will end up in a mental hospital. Right? For some people that happens. Why? You can't, you can't bear it. You can't uh, do it suddenly. You know, that's not possible. Buddha could do it. Maybe he, ha he had the strongest mind, you know, so he could do it overnight. But for us, it's difficult. Right? Our, our engines, the CC level is lower. So you have to take it properly according to your capacity. Right? So gradually do it. There's no rush. Even I was talking to somebody a few days ago. That person was in a rush, you know, trying to achieve everything. You know, I'm giving up my current lifestyle. I'm, I'm coming to a monastery. I'm living where, you know, they are that type of approach. But I told them, now how many years ha did it take for you to reach this level? Then the person was calculating, okay, I did uh, this and that, that. Okay, 20 years into a marriage, you know, uh, with children. I'm living this life now. It, it has taken 20 years for me to reach this place. Right? So can you change it overnight? Can you undo 20 years of things? Um, 20 years of marriage, you know, the, uh, the relationships with your children, whatever the things that you have built, can you undo them overnight? That's not possible. And it's not fair for the other people as well. You know, your family members, your spouse, that's not fair as well. Right? So if you want to undo everything, it might take a few years for you. That is natural. Why can't you take that time and gradually do it? Why can't you take that time and, you know, wisely do it? Instead, what we are trying is, you know, we become emotional. And we destroy everything that we built for like last 20 years. And at the end of the day, you become frustrated. Nothing works. Even the practice doesn't work. Right? Then they, you start hating the practice. It has destroyed everything in my life. That's not true. You, you have to approach it wisely. That wise approach is important. So that's why we say start meditation in your life. Don't come here. Right? Live your life while meditating for a couple of hours. Can you continue that? Continue for a few months. Then come to a silent retreat, probably like five days. For a beginner, five days is a big time. It feels like, you know, like a huge mountain. Five days in a monastery, in silence, it's not easy. But you can try a few days initially. Then your mind gets comfortable with it when you do it for a few times. Then you can do like 10 days kind of a retreat. 10 days is a good time to really feel it. 10 days it's difficult for a newcomer, but it's a lengthy period for you to feel the practice into a certain degree. Right? So that type of approach you have to take. You can't do it overnight. You can't undo 20 years of things. Uh, within within a month or a week, that's not possible. You'll end up going crazy. Come to a come to a forest, a monastery like uh, like doing that, then you realize you can't survive here. Your mind is starting to you know go to your habitual uh, behaviors, 
and you remember all the family members, all the things that you have left behind. Difficult to survive. Right? So that's why the gradual approach is important. Gradually, you develop this ability. At least for 30 minutes daily, I can live without a purpose or meaning. And tomorrow also, I am comfortable doing that for 30 minutes. That way you have to approach. And when you do it for a few months, few years, you really feel that even your day-to-day -day life, most of the time you are surviving without goals, without planning, without purpose. Right? Because of the practice. You have done this few months of practice and your mind is more and more comfortable living without a purpose. Right? Your mind is more and more comfortable being in the present. That you can feel. You do your work. You know, you go to work. You do your family responsibilities. But there is no real struggle in your mind. There is no real uh, trying to achieving kind of a thing in your mind. Right? That change you can experience. Within few months of practice, you can experience if you do it properly. And that tells us there is a way to live without a purpose. There is a way to live without a meaning. Still you are doing 101 things, but there is no real meaning assigned to them. No real purpose assigned to them. You do them, but your mind is at peace. That transformation, that metamorphosis is important. But you have to go through it gradually. If you do it overnight, you'll go crazy. You'll kill yourself. That's what I mentioned earlier. Those concentration camp people, as soon as they lose their purpose in life or the meaning in life, then they, 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 their life is at its end. That's it for them. They can't survive even for a few weeks. They can't survive. So that book, the title is Man's Search for Meaning. Man's Search for Meaning, right? But if we talk about our practice, our search, what is our search? Our search is for no meaning. It takes time, but that's the very idea, right? So gradually you can develop it. You don't need many things, material things to, to be happy. The money, it won't buy you happiness. Right? Instead, you can live in your mind peacefully, happily, without any purpose, without any meaning. And it is sustainable. Right? So that's the very idea. Now, when we talk about this this thing, a story comes to my mind. It's about uh, a sage at Alex uh, King Alexander's time. You know, great Alexander. During his time, his name was Diogenes. One time, great Alexander he came to Diogenes, and you know, gave him kind of a wish, kind of a thing. Right, so this person, Diogenes, he was a sage at times, and he was living in a minimalized life. He was living in a barrel without much uh, things, and he was, uh, you know, bathing in the sun when Alexander came. And he stood nearby this sage, covering the sun, and told him, I grant you any wish. Then this person gets up and looked at uh, Alexander. I, I have only one wish. Get out of my way so I can start my sun bath again. That's all. I don't need anything else from Ivan, from great Alexander. Right? Just be, leave me at peace. Just let me live my life. That is the only thing. And Alexander shocked with this incident, later told his followers, if I am not great Alexander, I'll live that man's life. 
if i am not great alexander i live diogenes's life right so that's alexander's idea right so this way gradually through the practice we can really survive this world without much purpose or meaning but it takes time it takes work but you can do it and when you achieve a certain level into this practice you realize you are happy and peaceful in your mind without the things without the purpose without planning without material things that's the real idea so thank you for listening and i hope today's thoughts are helpful thank you very much bante yeah, indeed they are very helpful thoughts I also got uh, five, six books all about planning, productive pa- planning, effective planning, morning planning, but nothing worked so far uh, except the mindfulness. If you read between those lines in the books, they're all about the mindfulness. Eventually, it comes down to the mindfulness. So I'm so happy I'm on the process of developing that skill. Thank you very much, Pante. The talk, uh, you can listen again uh from Nisranamane website and also MixLR and Facebook. Please listen and get the essence of the talk. Next up on presentation of our reports. Prior to that, um, I would like to share the uh, the practice, practitioner's guide for mindfulness. I assume Samantha will join us presenting the report today. I'll share my screen. Samantha, would you like to present those instructions as well? Yes. Yes, Nadi. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Yeah, over to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Nadi. Um, I was Rai Bante, and um, thank you for that valuable um, um, guidance and good advice that really helped me look at things in a new light now. Um, so I presume, Nadi, if you're going to chuck your books away now but <laughs> um anyway um so look forward to the discuss discussing further um th- there are two um questions that we reports that we actually received bante um but before i go um to read the reports um i think in the there's a link um will be put in the chat um just to remind everyone uh, especially for newcomers um on the basic guidance on how to meditate um and um um the guidance given by Nisaranavane and submit your experiences uh, to and the rep- in in the form of a report to Bante um yes i think uh, the chats are yeah they're in the link now um yeah it's there um and uh, Bante so once you submit your reports Bante will then give uh valuable guidance um and advice how to individually how to progress in the meditation um and um and there are also as you can see in the guide there are two helpful um video links put together by Nisarana Vanaya and on mindful walking and mindful sitting um and uh, you can allocate some time for the practice daily um starting with say walking meditation um and then sitting meditation gradually building up to um two hours per day that would be helpful um then once you've done that um uh, it's good to submit your experiences in writing both um your experience of the mindful walking and sitting uh meditation to bante and um, there's an example in the chat how you can do this and how to present your report uh for example if you're walking you can describe your prominent sensations uh texture of the ground the pressure points um on the soles um and how you um uh, shifted the leg and also how the body weight shifted uh similarly in sitting meditation again you can refer to any prominent sensations in coming and outgoing breath at the nostrils uh arising from falling at the abdomen and whatever you experience basically um as bante just said just be and then write whatever you um experience um and without having any goal or purpose that i've learned today as well 
Um, so, um, and also you can also put this into practice doing your daily activities during the day. Um, that's also part of the mindful uh, away from the cushion. Uh, then in the, in the session, Bhante will give valuable guidance uh, for your own practice and how to progress in your meditation. Um, so please make use of this time because they're, they're valuable. Uh, you can write the reports. Uh, you can send your reports either in the Google form uh, that's in the link or by uh, email using the links provided uh, again that's been put in the chat. Um, so um, again, it's a good opportunity to get personal guidance from Bante and continue with your mindful practice uh, during the week according to the advice given for your own report during the session as well. Um, and also, as Nadeep earlier said as well, all the recordings um, of the session are available um, at the links uh, given in the chat. So um, you can catch up uh, any uh, or re-listen to the advice Bante has given. Um, okay, so I think I'll now go on to the um, reports. There are two reports, Bante. Um, let me just see. We have. Shall I read the first report now, Bante? Yes, um, Yeah, so the first report, uh, Avasarai Bante, I would like to present my rep reflection report on mindful walking. I began walking by focusing all my attention on my soul. I could feel the floor with my soul when each foot touched the floor. I could feel the time between one foot rising from the floor and the next moment when it placed firmly on ground. Focus maintained between sole of my foot and of the sole through air when I moved from one foot to the other. I felt relaxed compared to the stress that I always felt during the normal day-to-day -day activity. I also felt that I had thoughts flowing through my mind, but I could still maintain enough attention on my soul. I also saw that my attention to how I turned at each corner of the walking track was sharper and more concentrated than during when I walked straight. I could feel the body movement and turning very well. Sometimes my focus went into my thoughts without my knowing, and I realized this when my focus shifted back to the sensation of my soul or to the movement of my body. The speed and the walking were maintained automatically by the walk itself and allowed this to continue without trying to make any changes myself. This is a report on my mindful walking Bante and much appreciation for any, adv Bante, uh, any advice Bante has, can provide me. Much merits to all. That's, um, that's the uh, first report Bante. Okay, so that's good. The way of the practice and the observations are very nice. And when you are absorbed, in this process, observing all these details, you are utterly mindful. That is the very idea. Right? So, without you even knowing, you are in the present moment. Whenever you feel these details, bodily sensations. Nadeep, can you hear? Samantha, can you hear me? Yes, Bante. Y yes, okay. Bante. Yeah. Okay, so the, the screen is frozen, that's right. Okay, <laughs> so whenever you are absorbed in, in the process, observing these details, you are living in the moment and you are living without a purpose or a meaning, right? So that's the very idea uh, when we talked about today's topic. That's the very idea. Imagine if you are not practicing like this, what will happen? Your mind will be in daily struggles, planning the future, worrying about the past. So that's the habitual behavior of the mind. 
without you even knowing this is what's happening but when we are absorbed in observing our bodily sensations our walking sitting day to day processes then without us knowing we are letting go of the plans struggles worrying and being in the moment that is the very idea of this practice that's why we say give priority to a bodily sensation let it be in walking sitting or even daily activities just continue your observation like this and when you do it you are absorbed in the present moment you are no longer supporting energizing those plans worries struggles that's not what you are doing instead you are present right so what i we lost you bonte um i'll, I'll put a chat can hear me now yeah we can hear you now bonte thank you i think it's uh, some trouble from my side because he, it's a heavy downpour today starting yesterday's evening till now the entire time it's a heavy downpour finally it feels like we are in rains retreat usually august is a dry month here although it's rains retreat all august is a dry month here but now it feels like rains retreat anyway so uh, <laughs> that way can you observe you are walking process that that you have in your report what i am asking is can you observe your daily activities as well whenever you do things just just be with that process when you have your meals just be with that process when you take a wash just be with that process notice these bodily sensations now let's say you are taking a shower now the bodily sensations are different now now you are no longer observing the feet instead you feel the water running through you feel applying soap you you feel the coldness or the warmth of water right so that that way try to be with the activity at hand and continue your practice maybe the observation not won't be so sharp as this one when you do in daily activities but still there would be an observation because this is formal meditation this is walking sitting you can do a sharp observation but in daily activities your mind get distracted naturally that's fine but still you can do the observation now that is the very idea and if you can approach each and every activity in that manner then you are meditating all the time you are meditating all the time that's why tik nat chan he is the, the master and the, he's from i think france he he stayed there during his final years and he says walk like you are kissing the earth with your feet that's the idea he's giving walk like you are kissing the earth with your feet that type of attention that type of importance you are giving right so that's the very approach and when you do it in no time you realize your mind is at much higher levels of peace and lesser levels of worrying anxiety depression right so try it and let us know your progress thank you bante um so the next question is on um mindful sitting uh sat in a comfortable position on the cushion and waited attention naturally moved to sensation of breathing which was prominent thoughts arose and passed but cannot remember these sounds heard few times too awareness of breath continued body sat still and mind felt calm and breath was more subtle gentleness and kindness arose in the mind cycles of prominent and subtle breath continued boredom arose no reaction in mind p 
peacefulness arose next and no reaction in mind. Observed various phenomena arising in mind and passing away. Sat for, one, sat for an hour. Uh, that was mindful sitting. Now mindfulness during the day. It was useful to note how to practice, it, how the practice is starting to condition the mind in a healthy manner. There was an event at end last year, end of last year, that was extremely difficult to manage. A lot of anger and frustration followed. The person involved was motivated by greed and they seem unaware of this. Many were affected by his behave, misbehavior. Had valuable feedback from Bante about this situation, which helped to understand it from a bird's eye view. This le led to disinterest in rescuing others from forthcoming harm. Recently, a Dhamma friend mentioned another disturbance involving the same person and how it was becoming difficult for many. His allies are applying regular pressure on people to give in to his demands. There was no anger or frustration noted in the mind while hearing this, only compassion for all. Also, the realization that this is how the world operates, how the unawareness brings so much suffering. The emotional charge of the original event has lost most of its power. These sessions and the practice are slowly changing unskillful automatic behaviors into more useful direction. Dear Bante, look forward to your valuable feedback. Much merit to you, Peruan Saranai. Okay, now in your uh, sitting practice, you mentioned that uh, prominent and subtle breath cycles. Sometimes the breath is so prominent, sometimes it is subtle, right? So breath is always going through these cycles, right? You feel the prominent breath, you feel the subtle bit. Subtle breath is replaced by the prominent breath. Prominent breath is replaced by the subtle breath. And when you observe this for so many cycles, what happens to your mind? It loses interest. Whether it's prominent or subtle, your mind is no longer moved. Your mind is no longer interested, right? So that's the very idea of the practice. Initially, you feel like the prominent breath is good. Later, you feel like subtle breath is good. Again, you hate it when the prominent breath comes. Again, you love it when the subtle breath appears. So this way we react initially, initial phases of our practice. But with time... What happens is that when you observe these cycles for like thousand and one times, you realize your mind is not interested. Whether it is subtle or prominent, your mind is not moved. Right? So that's the very idea of the practice. That's why we are doing it repetitively. This happens to breath. This happens to everything else. This happens to breath. This happens to life. Right, so that's why that's how the meditators change. Right, even in their life, they change. Sometimes the life is extreme, like prominent. Sometimes it is, it is calmly running, you know, peaceful, subtle. Time after time, these extreme episodes come. Time after time, these peaceful episodes come. Usually we don't like these extreme episodes. We prefer peace, right? But the real meditation will teach you whether it is extreme or peaceful. Don't get moved by them. The mind won't be moved whether it is extreme or prominent. Whether it is peaceful or subtle, it doesn't matter. That is the very change that will happen from the practice. 
earlier when those ep- extreme episodes come you two are reacting a lot right the, these demands are unreasonable we have to save them we have to save other people that way we 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 react we don't like these extreme episodes we prefer peace subtle but when you do the practice you realize whether it is extreme whether it is subtle if you are not moved you are peaceful that's that's the difference in attitude when you when we hear your report initially you were uh, reacting to those extreme situations you were preferring subtle peaceful nature now even in extreme situations you you have peace right saving other people is difficult that doesn't mean that we we can't do it sometimes but but most of the time right and these these incidents they tell us that that everybody is you know trying to solve it it's not like they want to make a, make it a mess but in the process they will end up making it a huge mess that's what happens you know they are trying to help they are trying to solve they are trying to somehow come into terms but in the process they'll they'll make it a huge mess right so that's the world that we are living in that's the world you know gradually you have to develop the practice and face it dif- differently that's the only option otherwise we are always a court it's a never ending process most people they suffer a lot what can you do you can't really help them right they are they are caught in that process you give them advice you realize what a fool i am trying to give them advice sometimes there's this urge to you know advise them that's why you have to you know go through that phase and you realize what a fool i am to try and change people like this that's not possible some people they come for advice you know even i i had this opportunity a few days ago they come for advice they say bante i need your advice tell me right this is the problem i am facing this is what i want to do what do you think right so i try to refrain from giving any advice i say okay if you do this good if you do this bad if you do that good bad that way i give <laughs> right at the end of the day no advice is given right because they they have already decided believe it or not they know what they want to do they just want somebody's validation that's all that's all that's why they are asking from everybody people who will validate their opinion they like it people who don't validate their opinion they hate it so you have to you know understand you know people won't change we are who we are right change is somebody else so difficult you know how difficult it is to change yourself so how can you hope that you can change somebody else right they know what they want they know what to decide you know just let them be and they realize okay this is my decision whether you like it or not i'll do this right it's good to not give advice you know later you realize they already had that idea they were looking for validation they they don't want to listen to anybody else that's the very thing that's the very process that we are caught even nowadays this scientific researchers they are telling even just just a split second before the thoughts a decision was made right the decision was already made the thought processes will justify that decision right we think the opposite now we think that we are thinking after thinking we decided that's how we think that's how we feel but in reality in our mind we make the decision first and then although thought processes will you know justify it that's what we are doing and we are saying okay after so much thinking i decided <laughs> funny right so that's how we are we are who we are so when you realize it you 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 do you realize it's better just you know just mind my own business 
and be at peace enjoy the drama don't go away you know live 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 your life live among these people enjoy the drama sometimes you you know like act act like you are angry <laughs> act like you you are caught in the process right that way you can enjoy more you <laughs> can enjoy more because they are anyway caught right now this emotional person you know i have been dealing with somebody so emotional right so whatever the opinion they give i take the opposite side right as soon as my idea is given they take you know so aggressively bante why are you doing this i don't like this i i, I need this your opinion is totally different that way they are coming after me right just for fun i am taking the opposite side opposite opinion opposite idea whatever they come whenever they come with their idea i give the opposite thing right it's so fun to you know see the process the whole five stage of five stages of dying you can see right <laughs> anger anger frustration denial grief acceptance everything you can see as soon as they accept i change my opinion again i give a whole new uh, direction a whole new idea again the whole process happens right after many weeks of this this person came to me and said bante whatever i say you are taking the opposite side <laughs> great realization <laughs> whatever that person is saying i am taking the opposite stand opposite side right so the, the, that type of approach you have to say you know some people might say it's cruel you know try to live other way and you will realize everything last drop of blood is sucked right they suck your blood everything not the allowed amount everything they suck right in the process you die instead just be a little cruel enjoy the drama enjoy the show and live your life that type of approach is much healthier in this world try it and see it's a learning process it's a balancing act but you can get there uh, bante there's another um, question uh, someone has put in the chat shall i read that i know uh, that question bante. what kind of a cruel person that's the question in the chat <laughs> that i already answered <laughs> Oh right okay yeah is um, that the question that you are having um the first um it's it's well it says about um i'm not sure it says tell okay. on sarana bante sitting walking and day activity oh, that, that's a different question then i yeah, thought the I, so. i thought the, the, there's a question in my chat i thought that maybe it's what you are reading okay go ahead ah uh, no yeah thank you bante Um so this one Teruan Saranai Bante sitting walking and day to day activities are like are all are like one and commonly below different natures appear from time to time sometimes it likes nothing to express being aware and things fading both merged together like and again it's fading sometimes things there or not both are the same that is also not noticeable sometimes sometimes it's like nothing is relevant those natures keep changing from one to another and not stable even attached to something it doesn't weigh or heavily as early it doesn't weigh or heavy as early those are released sooner or later with no interest in that several months ago started popping out suicidal thoughts as going to do harm from a knife this kind of harming thought arise years ago when i lost nearby ones and all the things anyhow with time it was suppressed When this was informed to the chief Bante, he instructed to continue sitting, walking. So followed instructions. 
noticed those thoughts power was reducing like from a distance those are fading after time noticed that naming them or identifying those thoughts got fuel then let it be in the whole mixture when things fade without labeling with time no such thoughts if not even there is like more blur like recently found it comes in a different thought there was a battle like no need to express or share this and express it in the report anyhow felt to mention this even the thought is blur two can figure out the thought as it's like going to squeeze neck from hands once reminded that bunte had mentioned things can come in different masks like same devil in different masks noticed whatever fades are observed as those are and it is very blur and sometimes it becomes a bit stronger than it used to be then slight fear fades and even that is noticed it seems like thoughts don't have a heavy quality like they used to it is like something which gives them a heavy look has been has been removed like they have no more power which they used to have bante thank you so much for your guidance there one saranai that's the end of the question bante okay we are happy to hear your experience regarding the practice now when we talk about those intrusive thoughts those suicidal thoughts various other intrusive thoughts usually we don't like to reveal them right you can't reveal it reveal them everywhere you have to find a proper audience a audience like this or maybe a counselor kind of audience right so when we try to reveal them there is a resistance that was mentioned in your report a uh, pride kind of a resistance is there trying not to reveal it right but you have done it no you have revealed the the true nature or the experience that you're having that that sharing information sharing experience is life changing right whatever these intrusive thoughts they usually survive in the darkness you try to get rid of them you try you don't like them you 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 want to hide them right so that type of a nature usually these thoughts have but when you share right you can share anonymously like this when you share then you realize they lose as power they lose as power as long as you hide them as long as you keep them in the darkness they have so much power right so that's the very nature of these intrusive thoughts that's why it is important to have this type of a bond or this type of an audience for us to discuss All right so every week we gather we we listen to each other uh, in the sake of dhamma in the sake of the practice and when you have that it's very important that's a important aspect of the of our life right so when you reveal them they don't have so much power when you when you put them under light they don't have so much power right so that's why it is important uh, that that you have done this you have done this right you you realize that these thoughts they they want to hide they want to become special they 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 want to you know be be keep their privacy that type of uh, attitude is there with these thoughts right but when we reveal when we you know notice them as thoughts when you identify them as thoughts that very revealing that very identification will allow you to uh, 
drain their powers. Right? They can't be special. And said, they are in the category of thoughts. Right? Everything is there. Good thoughts, bad thoughts. Uh, do no harm thoughts, do harm thoughts, everything is there, right? In our practice, we usually don't, you know, categorize them. Like we don't uh, appreciate the good thoughts. We don't get try to get rid of the bad thoughts. That's not what we are doing. If you know the real meditation, that also I have to mention, right? We, we just label them as thoughts. We know the content. We know that these are good thoughts. We know that these are bad thoughts. But we are not trying to get rid of them. Let them be. Let them be. Whatever the thoughts, whatever, whether it's good or bad, let them be. If you try to get rid of them, that very getting rid of process will empower those very thoughts. That is the reality. That is the nature of the mind. When we assign some value, positive or negative, we are empowering those thoughts. Right? So that's why in practice we say, take, say, accept thoughts as thoughts. Let them be. Not let them go. Let them be. Let them be. And you continue your mindfulness. When when you don't try to get rid of them, they lose us their very power. They lose us their very power. When you don't try to retain them, like good thoughts, let's say we try to retain them. When you don't try to retain them, they lose us their very power. That is how we can, you know, see thoughts as thoughts without assigning any value to them. Right, whether good or bad, let them be. That is the very idea. Everybody has those type of intrusive thoughts. Maybe not the same category, but different things. Maybe harming somebody else. You know, maybe maybe killing an animal. Who who knows? It's the human nature. It's the human nature. It's like a, a sentier. Half human, half animal. That's who we are. In our body, we appear totally human. But in our mind, we are half human, half animal. Have You, you have seen those mythological figures. Half human, half animal. Horse of a boy, body of a horse, human uh, upper part. Right? Or body of a fish, human upper part. Right, so those are half human, half animal, half beast. That's who we are in our mind. We have a split mind. Some thoughts are good, some thoughts are bad. Some thoughts are, you know, can be revealed, some thoughts can't be revealed. That is the human nature. It's a good thing that we can't read other people's minds. Otherwise, what will happen? When you read the minds of your close ones, you will get sick and tired of life, you know, sick and tired of people. It's good that we can't read them. It's it's good that we can't read their minds. It's good that we you can't read your spouse's mind. It's good that you can't read your children's minds. It's good that you can't read your friends' minds. If you read them, then <laughs> you won't survive, right? So that's the thing. All of us, human nature, human nature, right? They they appear in a way, they think in a totally different way. They smile to your face, in the mind they try to kill you, right? That's the nature, that's the nature. So this is the reality, this is the reality, human nature. So that's why we say, don't try to get rid of the bad thoughts, don't try to sort them, just ask, let them be. Don't assign any value, whether good or bad. Right? That very process will help you to see thoughts as thoughts. Continue. Continue the practice and you'll see these thoughts, they, 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 they fade into the background. They lose their value. 
right? Now you have assigned much value to these thoughts, that the category that you're explaining, right? But with practice, you realize they, they fade into the background. They lose as they are special value. They become just thoughts, whether it's good or bad. That's the very practice. The thoughts are just thoughts, whether it's good or bad, right? So you are getting there. We are happy that you shared. That's an important part of the healing process. Try to continue and let us know in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Bhante. That's great advice. Um, I think that's all the quest uh, the reports we have. There's um uh it's past ten o'clock. There's one yes, hand we are two ten minutes so past can... ten minutes past our ending time. So mm -hmm. I have another session, so this might be it. Uh, so shall we leave that question? Um, do you want to next. ask that question, Ashini, for next week? Next time Ashini. we'll take. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'll, uh, in that case, I'll hand over back to Nadeep to wrap up so that the Bante can go to the next session. Thank you, Bante. Thank you very much, Samantha. Much merit, Bante. So we just a uh, bit over the time today, and uh, we are coming to the end of the session today. Uh, Let's pass those uh, merits uh, accrued through the wholesome thoughts uh, we experienced today to the well-being and spiritual development of Bhante. And let's, uh, let's also pass those merits to the initiator of the Satipasala Foundation and also our great teacher, Chief Abbot of the Nisaranamane Forest Monastery, Most Venerable Uduri Gama Dhammajiva Mahatero, and also this program made success by those, the work from the tremendous work from the volunteers and pass those merits to the well-being and the spiritual development of those volunteers as well. And thank you very much, all participants, and hope you have a wonderful week ahead and mindful week ahead. Let's join next week at the same time on Saturday. Thank you very much. I will end the program now.